I have my very good friend Kevin Lamb with me. Kevin, uh, you may not have heard his name, but he has an amazing career going all the way back to Motown. He's worked on more number one this is and that's, more blockbuster films than you could imagine. And he's also done sound design for you know, some of the best synthesizers ever made, including this one, I might modestly say. And so uh, it's been wonderful working with Kevin. He's brought his uh, sound design chops, years of experience and amazing ears to the Moog One. And uh, we've invited him here today to show off some of the sounds that he's programmed for this instrument and to talk a little bit about what went into them, you know, some of the techniques that were used and, uh, and just to show off how they sound as well. So Kevin, welcome. Glad Thank you could you. be with us. Nice to be here. Awesome. So what? You're driving. What do you I'm want driving. To okay. No, you're driving. Uh, I'm just here to introduce you. But basically, the idea is we dragged you all the way across the country, loaded this up with your sounds, and uh, I, uh, the hope is... You want to talk about Pat? Um, yeah, just like show off some sounds. And then, you know, it's just like, it, just like you were talking to me about what makes this a cool sound and what yeah, you did to it. Um, and these are all single layer sounds. These are not stack sounds. Um, There's so there's animation on the wheel, animation, on aftertouch, on but it's the sonic XY change. It's, it's it's not like you get here's your effect. Wow, wow, wow. This is you can with the X Y hold. A lot of nuances there. A lot of subtlety that I wouldn't have imagined out of three analog oscillators. It's it's crisp, but it's I don't know uh, well defined, uh, subtle, and those are not words I usually use on on three oscillators at once. You know, mm -hmm. there's not. It's usually let's bludgeon them. You know, um, but you can also let's bludgeon them. Um, oh, we had them here. Um. You can get low. And the X Y pad is really, with the whole feature, mm -hmm. it allows a whole range of, of tonal subtleties or a range of sounds within one patch. Mm -hmm. If you program it like the FM to kick in more, it suddenly becomes a different patch like this. It's not this. That's right. And I, with reservations, because I, I haven't played every synth out there, this is the one synth where you can make it go from digital to analog, but truly analog. Mm -hmm. It's not make-believe analog. Um, <laughs> And the XY pad is very, very good for that. You just um, dive into the mod matrix and see what all it's doing here. I'm curious. So you got aftertouch to both of the filters, velocity to the envelope amount, and the pad is doing SVF cutoff and resonance. Yeah, so this yeah. one's just... Oh, yeah. Which is not the sound of the ladder. That's filter. right. Um, very different character. And that's one of the things with... The, with um, this is, doesn't have to sound like a Moog. Um, I'm looking for the the other patch we just had, and I can... See, it might have psyched you out here. If you want to find it in the browser, if that's easier. I can easier. find it in the yeah, browser it. so much faster. Um, this is more like... It's... Like an, it sounds like an Oberheim. I don't want to say it sounds like Tom's filter, or it sounds like Tom's instrument, but it has that character because it's a state variable filter. That's the thing is, is I use sometimes mod wheel, not for vibrato. Mm -hmm. After touch with vibrato, and that tweaks it out. What is that doing? Um, the ladder cutoff, because I'm running them in parallel. I'm having this open up, but I'm also feeding mm -hmm. both filters, 
or feeding the ladder filter and the state variable independently. So you can tweak out on, on the res on the state variable and it does different things to the, to the ladder filter. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I want to talk to you about that at some point. Oh, the series in parallel? Boy, you can do some amazing things with that. Absolutely. Um, there's also... Ah, uh, I know what we'll do. The most fun you're going to have with an analog synth is arpeggiators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a few forum comments like, oh, there's this pop on the envelopes. Like, that, yes, that's because they go really flipping fast to. if you want, want them that. to. Yeah. yeah. That if you don't want it there, you just back it off. You can make it as smooth as you want. Yeah, you put that in yeah. the drums and it suddenly slams the drums harder yeah. because this is popping. But the fact that you can dial it out just slowly. Yeah, that's right. But, um,. Effects kicking in after it's it. Oh yeah. You can start getting into that into that Berlin sort of technical thing, techno thing where you can dial up the res without ever touching the res knob yeah. and save it that way. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal, an amazing synthesizer. Um, these are all single layer sounds as well. <coughs> There's been no doubling, uh, which I love. There's so much nuance in it. Um, here, which one did you like? That was another. Oh, yeah, I liked, I liked all of these that are saved. stuff this is like soundtrack stuff you could put this in the back of a track down low and it never sticks out too much mm -hmm. but it adds motion to it that you can't get any other way um, and I, I was hesitant when it first arrived and thinking well and fell in love with it in about 36 minutes wow it's uh, it's an amazing instrument then there's oh. I mean the bass. God, don't get me going on basses. Oh no. Um, Let's hear some basses. It's like a timpani sound to it. Does, and that's all done with the FM. Mm -hmm. So you got FM and hard sync, and those together are fearsome. Yeah. Um, and I have to admit, I should say this: watch the bottom end with this thing. I blew one of my monitors, and I wasn't loud at all. It just happens to have a lot of bass energy and now I get a fizz every time I hit an F and a G.
that's taking both filters with equal energy and using almost a composite approach to doing a base patch. And Three fifths. oscillator, two filter base patch, that's, that's thick. In that, fifths, in mm, fifths. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Goes back to the 70s, there we go, the mm -hmm. 70s base patch. Um, the modulation matrix is brilliant and it's, it's very fast and easy to set up modulation sources and destinations. And some of these, what, seven different modulations on, what, six, five on the aftertouch alone just to get that effect. You well, can't do that with a lot of instruments because mm -hmm. um, they don't have two filters, number one. And analog oscillators is brilliant. What, uh, these are. They're in no particular order. Yeah, no, it's, uh, but this. Tight effects at the end create mm -hmm. that tail. Yeah, I love the way that fades out. That's another thing you can do. That's right, yeah. The XY pad is pressure sensitive also. So it's kind of it's like you've got two independent aftertouch controllers. And I've done that on, on things where I've I've had to set up a filter opening up rhythmically. Mm -hmm. You can play it in with this now. It's That's great, right. Great. Play um, your own rhythms. That's right. Yeah, you would ordinarily you'd have to sequence that with a you know on a controller track or something. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. And it, it never turned out the way you wanted because it didn't have a vibe to it. But with the uh, velocity sensitivity on that, it's an instrument. You it's can like, say. yeah. You just play I it. have too much fun with this one. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I uh, I had other work on that suffered because of this. <laughs> Well, uh, we, we thank you very much for... No, 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 yeah. man. It, it was <coughs> so much fun Excuse that me. I was like, oh, well, I'll catch up on this. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, and another very cool thing, you can modulate LFO for vibrato by itself. And when you, you have... Um, That's a good solid sound, even with no modulation. Yeah. So That's, That's a slow LFO. It's kind of boring. When you modulate LFO1 by LFO1 and then send it to the oscillators, it's and it doesn't sound like a single oscillator. It sounds like or two LFOs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like one LFO. And I've never been able to do this except for on a modular synth, which is amazing. You can do that. Um, right on. I mean, there's there's too much to talk about here. It's really like y'all go away. I'm gonna play now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think I think actually probably a lot of the folks uh, out there listening would love to just sit back and hear some more sounds. Like, well, yeah, they so. probably prefer it more if they played it. That's <laughs> also true, but you know, uh, all all in good time. For now, we're it's we're here to feed that need. So. I mean, uh, God, there's too many sounds to go through um, that are really good. They're not mine. All, 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 you know, it's not like saying my sounds are the best. Other people have done some sounds. I go, really? Ooh, wow. That one with the sub, I think this was the patch I blew my, mm. my monitor on. But you can also get... And I, 
some of the calls I get are to make sounds like that mm -hmm. for film. Um, yeah, that's definitely got eerie cinematic vibes. I'd want to use it, but it's going in, in the <laughs> instruments of this factory now. And, uh, <laughs> there's... Um, that's all state variable. FM gets modulated and adds an octave down. Wow. Like a feeling. The old trick. Hold it down hard, yep. play above it. Really pay the, play this patch up an octave. Okay. Um, the people have spoken. They say more sounds from Kevin. Uh, how about? I know you, New York, New York. <laughs> yeah. Um, boy, Sue the Tie Guy did some good ones. Um, weirdly, like a copy electric piano. Or the stereo chorus on there, mm -hmm. the Eventide is really nice. Um, punch but it's not brass mm -hmm. it's like the old style you know the Moog but memory Moog brass but I don't want to compare it to a memory mode because it's really so much more um, and that's not dissing the memory mode so much as complimenting the one um, so smooth oh yeah give us, give us a little, little more of each little more of each sound Wow. Yeah, that's after touch state variable. Oh, more please. In bandpass mode. Um, so it, then there's this. Ooh. Anyone with subs on, you should you should feel the room. I think I did this one, did I not? So you don't just have to hold a chord and you can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. Cuss down on, on your mixing chores, it makes it really like much more organ? interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Of course it is. I call it creepy organ. With aftertouch. Oh, yeah. Hit the mod wheel. Bites. Mm -hmm. It bites. It's the one thing that uh, is a. Uh, that's the one thing I like about the LFOs is they're very, very smooth, which is. You can get in here and... Oh yeah, you got it set to sine wave. I mm -hmm. set it to sine wave and I started the waveform at zero. Mm -hmm. So, okay. which is a you know, 25, 26% yeah. start. 
because vibrato doesn't start here. It starts at the pitch and right. goes up and down from. And you can do that here, line it up. Um, and boy, are the LFOs really detailed. Um, surprisingly so. We put, put a lot in there. You know, we, we, when we were designing this thing, it was really gathering everything that everybody said that they wanted sort of for each feature in detail. So like every LFO feature request and then figure out how to harmonize all those, every envelope feature request and then how do we harmonize those. And it was also that people like you would have every available resource. So it wouldn't whine? <laughs> well, we love it when people say, that wasn't exactly what I needed. I need just this much more because that tells us how we can refine it even further. And you guys listen, which is nice. You listen. And That's our job. We create, we create the tools that people are, you know, yearning for. And we do that by listening. Harp light at a point. That is really a tool for a sound that's almost there and isn't working. Just, just find yep. the spot and hit hold. Mm -hmm. See, I love. Uh, I've you know been working with a lot of different sound designers and and hearing their work, and I love how everyone brings something different to the table. You know, and and the sounds that you've brought, you've really dug into the X Y pad and the pressure of it and the aftertouch and the way that all these things work together so that you're not just creating a sound, you're creating this space full of sound, full of related sounds that you can well, steer around in. A musical part is only half of it. With the wrong sound, the best musical part doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I try and make it so you can play it. It's not just static organ on off. You can press, you can hit it harder, and you should take advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, and the other one, ring mod. Mm -hmm. uh, ring mod and FM. I've got a couple patches I, I haven't got here because I'm finding it hard to make it behave with hard sync, FM, and ring mod. Oh, that's a <laughs> lot of modulation. Yeah, that's an unruly beast that you're trying I'm to tame for sure. I think it's in there. It's definitely in there. But you can do things like the pitch tracking. Mm. Dial back the pitch tracking to like 64.15 and you're there, and, and it's very exact, but it's finding that 64.15 mm -hmm. with ring mod and, and FM going in sight. Yeah, there's so much space to explore. But the fact that I can sync three to two and two to one, mm -hmm. and then go two and three can ring mod, and then three into one for FM, it just, you know how many hours modular. I sat there yeah. giggling to myself <laughs> There's absolutely no reason to make this patch, but isn't this fun? Oh yes. You know, I can't look at this. Whoa! Uh, and that's the thing I've I've missed out of a lot of instruments that you seem to have excelled at is the fun factor. I could sit and play ha quite happily, not saving a single thing, and for no reason but to entertain myself for hours. I know I've seen me do it. Yeah. Several of my earnest attempts to like, all right, I'm going to create some content. I'm going to author some patches oh, and make never some happened. sounds. Never no, happened. two hours of grinning like a fool, just enjoying the sounds that I'm making. Go, I'll get to it later, <laughs> but first I got to do this. Mm -hmm. and, so oh, much fun. Yeah, uh, it's been a while since I've played an instrument where I just go, no, I, I'm happy just playing. I don't have to work. You know, I'm not going to earn money today. This is too much fun. Oh, hey, speaking of which, we should probably play some more sounds. That's what we're up here for. Um, mostly. Mostly. Um, All right. Oh. Oh, yep. Got to do the marimba. And that sounds remarkably close. An analog. Um, you can make it sound tweezy as you'd like. Not a good tweezy for a lot of things, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I can make this sound nasty, which I, you know, somebody says, oh, make it more aggressive. And usually you go, you know, grab for a stomp box, let's just throw distortion on it. This, I can control how nasty mm -hmm. and still make it sound musical. Um, what's uh, typical? 
mm-hmm. cheesy organs. Um, but I don't know, I, I don't like the synth pads. That, and it's not because it's like, it's a mode, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's lots of notes and many voices. No, it's just got a thing about it where it really sits nicely. Um, I will reload that one. Strange. Uh, we'll go to something different. Bells. Let's, let's hang out on that for a minute. So yeah, just go and dial, dial it around some. And that's just a ladder filter. There's a... Uh, Just the right amount of feedback. <laughs> it's uh, well, that one's a bit more. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a bit much, but I love it. It's um, I can see a couple years down the line after you guys have tweaked it more and played more and added new features. This you know amazing instrument, amazing. Just one layer. You don't even have to get into like two more layers. One layer on its own is stunning, um, and. A couple of patches I did have, I actually was a modulation EG, has a loop EG. Mm-hmm. Slightly different than an LFO. Oh, for sure. It's multi-stage LFO. It's, yeah, it does With it variable weird, curves. You're responsible for that. I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I blame you. Um, I don't know. This, no, that one. Uh, oil drums? That might, is that? Oh, that one, yeah. Is that you? Oops. Ah, uh, uh, no. Other way. Why? I'm new at this. Left. I've, yeah. I've, I've never worked a synth before. <laughs> Thanks for being here, man. That's loud. And that's, I don't know, I think that's a bit bright. It's not just like, here's Moog, here's bass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can get a lot of sounds out of this thing that you n- wouldn't think Moog. Um, it's, uh, boy, I see all these patches and he did some good ones. Um, ah, there's. That's kind of, I'm holding it steady. Mm-hmm. Is that the SVF resonance? Yeah. Yeah, it really has some, some. It beats you up. It's yeah, cool. Some right? bite to it. And uh, you see how I've, I've sent 
two of the oscillators just to the SVF, two of them to the latter. Different pair to the latter, yeah. Yeah, and uh, one of them to both. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is with this, if you want to go into like series, I don't know if you've, if you've talked about that. Not just, I've mentioned the fact that you, you have the two filter blocks that you can run them side by side or you can run the state variable filter into the ladder filter. Well, that's series. And then you just only send it to the SVF. Because you got it. I was playing it more fluidly. Gate length on the uh, arpeggiator is a factor in how it how yeah, but you, punchy or, or whatever. You it got sounds. the gate length here. You yep. can adjust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, get that up near like eighty percent or something. And that's one of the beauties of this is everything is where you'd expect it to be. I think I'm working on LFA2 here. Oh. Uh, but is it but it's synced not to that? Synchronized. It's not key synced. Yeah. A lot of different options here. There's too many options. Yeah. Now you know why I'd sit there for two hours. Hours. Like, oh, yeah. Let, I what, what about this with that? What yeah, about, I need mm -hmm. a cup of coffee to see this through. <laughs> and then it's a pot of coffee, and then the second, the second pot, and it's like very Oberheim, dare I say. Mm -hmm. But still, not Tom's filter. It has that character. Uh, state variable is a very useful filter. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, the goal with this one was to you know encompass a lot of that those classic tonalities, but still bring something new to the table. Well, so that you plus, can say, oh, that sounds like the Moog One state variable filter. You state variable, second state variable, uh, and space them. Mm -hmm. That's what I did on this one. Um, yeah, you can get such a different sound that way. There's a modulation source, it's not on <laughs> Ah, okay, wait, I SPF spacing, if that's not a mod destination, then we should see to it. That's like but, one of those things where... All right, let's go here, SVF, cut off, no, it is one. spacing, it is one. there it is. I, I'm going to take advantage of that Absolutely. when I get home. I've, there's so much in here that, that you couldn't possibly cover everything in a week of just playing and programming because it's so useful in so many different directions you could take it in. But that is a good one. So... That's take it the other way. Uh, this is this is gonna be hours. When I get back back home, <laughs> oh, it's just gonna gave be you hours, hours more to, to work on. Oh, uh, you're a bad man, bad <laughs> bad man. Happy to help. It's um, but I mean I uh, I could go on for an hour and you get bored because I'm saying the same thing of, this is an amazing instrument. Um, it, like to be able to come up with, and you know what that's doing through a sub. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that's actually using colored noise and one oscillator and. Um, Just doing like a little downward pitch ramp, okay. Well, it's, I don't know if it's downward pitch ramp, but it's more filtering. Oh, okay. See? There's definitely, okay, I see. Yeah, the tone's not descending, it's just the, the cutoff. It's yeah. cutoff and yeah. the filter color. Yeah. Wow, that, that does a lot. I'm going to be using that sound. Mm -hmm. I'll sample it so I, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, That'll be in some cues. All right, um, we've had a bunch of questions come in while we've been yakking and nerding out over here. So 
Um, I'll go ahead and just go through the ones that I have here. Uh, one curious soul <coughs> asked if the XY pad on the Moog One responds to multiple fingers the way the Voyager does. And that's kind of a trick question because the Voyager XY pad technically also only tracks a single touch. And this XY pad on the One also only tracks a single touch. But both of them, you can, if you're just feeling very tactile, you can dig in with multiple fingers and it basically averages the touch position and the pressure of however many digits you mash against it, so, which is more or less what the Voyager does. Um, and uh, so full touch sensitivity, um, you know, you, you really, you can just, you don't have to look at it, you can just dig into it and move around and listen to how things change. And it's an organic performance input, uh, just, just like any of the others, and you know, maybe one of the most sensitive of them on here. Um, there's a question of, is there a lag processor in the mod matrix? Not currently, but it's uh, definitely we're, it's, um, it's on our wish list. Voltage range of CV ins and outs is definitely at least minus five to plus five, and I don't want to promulgate misinformation and say that it, well, let me see if it, I'll just go to the settings here. Go to CV outputs and out voltage max. Uh, okay, yeah, looks like minus five to plus five, and that's adjustable. You can do zero to five within that range. I don't see a zero to 10 option on the CV outputs. So, uh, you know, you might, depending on what you're trying to interface it with, you might need to, you know, add an offset. There are actually uh, custom modules out there designed to work alongside synths like the Mother 32 that do shifting and scaling uh, to make sure that you just have an easy solution for uh, level shifting between all of your different modules that have different voltage ranges. So there are solutions there, but uh, minus five to plus five continuously adjustable is the range that you get natively out of the Moog One. Can you use the Moog One as a MIDI to CV converter? Um, I would say there are a number of ways in which you can do that, and it's all gonna depend on how you have the CV outputs programmed, what MIDI signals you're mapping them to. Um, broadly speaking, I would say yes, you know, the full details of that are, are, are TBD. In the meantime, go out and get a Mother 32. Also a wise option, or a grandmother, both of which are excellent and it's versatile. It's the same MIDI to CV, that one is spot on. That's right, spot yeah, you've used that a lot. I yeah. do, I use that. Excellent. There is a noise source in the mod matrix. Uh, it's actually separate from the analog noise source. It's more like the, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a pseudo-random noise. It, it's a, yeah, like a one over F white noise-like algorithm that you can pop into any mod source. So you can add variable amounts of noise um, anywhere in the mod matrix that you like. Uh, external audio in is not a part of the mod matrix. Uh, the external CV inputs are a part of the mod matrix, but the audio input is not scanned and sent to the mod matrix. So you can run external audio into the mixer, run it through the filters, uh, the effects, the VCAs, uh, but not directly into the mod matrix. Although, with a hot enough amplifier, I'm sure you could run audio <laughs> into the CV inputs and cool things would happen. I mean, You're that's, a sick man. hey, modular <laughs> synthesis, there's no wrong connections. Well, maybe there's just a few. That's my rule number one with sound design. If it sounds right, it is right. Absolutely. I don't care how you got there. Absolutely. And another question, is FM on the Moog One linear or exponential? Yes, is the answer. You have multiple FM options. Generally speaking, I think the dedicated FM, I think that's linear, but uh, the frequency, which is in musical sense and semitones, and the beat frequency, which is in linear cycles per second in hertz. So that's two different frequency modulation destinations per oscillator, and one of them's linear and one of them's exponential. So uh, whatever kind of FM you want to hear, there are ways to, ways to go about it here on this instrument. And you know, we could probably do a whole nerd out session just on FM. Uh, everyone's been too busy finalizing the instrument and getting it ready to go to, uh, to prep for that. I don't have an FM, lengthy FM deep dive up my sleeve, but that's definitely something that I'd uh, love to get into in the not too distant future, because there's, there's so many fun sounds there. Uh, let's see, we got any sounds that we haven't played a handful of licks on just yet here? I think... Uh, might not have been through all the bases. Been through, yeah, the bases. There's oh, and these envelope generators will hurt you. They 
I can go here, dial up, or like in the in the browser, and say, I want to get all the bass sounds. Yep, and, and there they are. There you just, they are. Yep. Um, I like how that has a different attack at different velocities. That's, that's the scaling. Mm -hmm. The scaling. Uh, I sent the keynote to the scaling on the oh, uh, nice. on the filter envelope. So as it goes up, it gets more compressed. Nice. Um, I did that one. And the glide is... You want old school mug? <laughs> it's in there, yeah. It's there, it's, it's all there. Um, did I do this one? I don't think so. I like that kind of phasey sound. That I yeah, I got um, music of chorus, but I've got it. The time of it set low, so yeah. it doesn't doesn't clock over too much. But the X Y pad. Learn to use the hold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because that, it, it, when you just run your finger over it, you pass by a lot of useful sounds. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go, oh, that's one, you can lift your finger if you got the hold mm -hmm. enabled and it keeps it there. Um, I found this one button to be a lot of use. Very Excellent. useful button. Well, I'm so glad. Um, I was hoping that's how it would work out. Yeah, it's, um, I think I did this one. I, uh... Oh, oh wow. Yeah, just after touch. The nice thing about that is... Where is... Ah, that sends it up a whole step, or down mm -hmm. a whole step rather than trying to get a ratio on all this. Right, now we tried to calibrate it like 1% per semitone. Yeah, and you see it in action. Yeah, awesome. Um, and I found getting around on this fairly easy once you kind of learn where everything is. And I, when I first said, oh, I, these little buttons, uh, look at the mm -hmm. module in detail. And I, I look even on instruments that are not Moog. I'm looking for a button that <laughs> I can focus in All on. All right. So, uh, Set the bar. That's a lot of uh, state variable. Mm -hmm. uh, I love hearing all this, all those new sounds. New familiar sounds. I, I can't speak highly enough about it. But for those of you, of, of you who live on the ground floor, don't worry about anyone stealing this one. It's too heavy to take out the window. <laughs> it's, it's so great. Everything yeah, it's about a security it, feature. It's, it's, it feels substantial. It feels good when you, you play it. it. It doesn't feel like it's going to break at any second. Um, so you hit the piano. You can give the keyboard some trouble. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're about ready to wrap on up here. It's, uh, bass us out. <laughs> yeah, you play bass outro. I, 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 got, no, I got no bass outro. Thanks very much for joining us.
dead. 